Hello viewers, I am Kausalya. Today we are going to discuss about state model of armature controlled DC motor. So here the main thing we are going to discuss about is the speed. Okay, how the speed is controlled in a DC motor. So basically the speed control system it is an electromechanical system. What do you mean by electromechanical? It includes mechanical components as well as electrical components. What do you mean by electrical components then? Electrical components are what are the basic elements here? That is resistor, inductor and a capacitor. Right. Regarding mechanical components, what are all the mechanical components? They may be moment of inertia, dashboard like that. Right. So, you see the electrical system consists of armature and field circuit. Right. But for analysis, only the armature circuit is considered because the field is always excited by a constant voltage. That is, field is always given supply with a constant value, right? For example, 150 volt or 230 volt, it will remain the same. Only the variation occurs in the armature part. So, we are considering only the armature part, right? The mechanical system consists of rotating part of the motor right the rotating part that is the shaft and the load connected to the shaft right so the mechanical system is contributed by the shaft and the load which is connected to the shaft here right so this is the typical diagram right so i hope you people are familiar with this right because we have already discussed about these things in our chapter one so this forms the field circuit and this forms the armature circuit only to the armature part the load is get connected right and here VA is the armature voltage and IA is the armature current likewise VF is the field voltage and IF is the field current okay and here you see here the load is connected to the armature part and the load is highlighted by its basic elements moment of inertia and the dash part here right and this armature part is represented by our la and ra that is inductor and a resistor right so these are all just the explanations of the notations which i used in the diagram right so these are all the things and here the extra thing here is you see eb this is known as back emf right and kt is the torque constant and unit is newton meter per ampere and t is the torque developed by the motor and the unit is newton meter and theta is the angular displacement okay just in the motor rotates right therefore it is represented as theta so angular displacement and again omega is nothing but angular velocity that is d theta by dt right and J is nothing but moment of inertia of the motor and the load and B is the frictional coefficient of the motor and load and KB is the back EM of constant right so next we are proceeding with equivalent circuit of armature so this is the detailed uh, circuit of an armature right it consists of a resistor inductor and there is a back EM of also right and the current which is flowing through this path is ia and here what is the voltage source here armature voltage right so va is your respect to input voltage right so when you apply kvl as usual voltage rise equal to voltage drop in a closed circuit that is known as kvl so here the current flows through resistor inductor and as well as through this back emf that is this part also so when you write expression you see here this is these are these three things contribute voltage drop and this va will be your voltage rise right so voltage drop is equal to voltage rise so here the voltage drop is contributed by this resistor so the drop across it is ia or e and again drop across inductor is la into dia by dt and here then the next is eb right so these three things contributes voltage drop so this voltage drop is equal to what is the voltage rise here it is va that is input voltage right so the next thing is 
torque of a DC motor is proportional to the product of flux and current. Okay, these are all the basic concept you studied in machines. I don't want to go back with that. Okay, because it is a huge topic. So just keep this thing in mind. It is enough. So torque is directly proportional to flux and current since flux is constant. Right. So what happened? Then the torque is directly proportional to the current right so it is represented as torque is directly proportional to ia so here we are introducing a proportionality constant so which is equal to kt into ia right now the electrical part of the armature is over now we are going to the mechanical part so the mechanical part is said to consist of moment of inertia on the dashboard right so here we have drawn those things and there will be some torque applied on it due to this torque there will be angular displacement right so again here you see just frame expressions for this okay we are writing an expression for this part okay you just no need to consider this one so j into d square theta by dt square plus this part b into d theta by dt is equal to applied torque t that is again here we are applying our law okay applied torque is equal to opposing torque that's it now here comes the back emf right so the back emf is proportional to the speed right and speed is nothing but our angular velocity right so this back emf is directly proportional to angular velocity and here we are introducing a proportionality constant that is eb is equal to kb into d theta by dt right initially we have analyzed about electrical part and then we proceeded with the mechanical part am i making things clear so here we had already framed two equations right so one comes from the electrical part and another comes from the mechanical part now we are going to replace this back emf with this expression right which is done here and mark it as equation number a and the next thing is again we are going to replace our torque here just replace the torque and mark this equation as b right so a and b are the differential equations governing the armature control dc motor right so these these two are the equations which governs the dc motor so next we are proceeding to our state variables so here when you again look back at the diagram you see when you look back the varying things are ia and theta do you accept or not so this armature current and theta are considered as the output variables right so here armature current theta and omega is nothing but d theta by dt right so we are considering these three as state variables for our analysis so we are equating these three terms to x1 x2 and x3 right x1 is ia and x2 is d theta by dt and x3 is theta right so the input to the motor is the armature voltage va right because va is the we are giving the source voltage as va so let this va is replaced with u because we usually represent input by the notation u right the next thing is again we are going to substitute these state variable values in the following equations again consider these two equations that is equation a and equation b right now consider our first equation so in this equation just replace you see here just replace ia by x1 right and if you have d theta by dt replace it with x2 and theta as x3 that's it so here you see we had replaced everything right after replacing just rearrange the term to form an expression for x1 dot right these are all the basic things i hope you people can easily understand right i want only x1 dot right so i am keeping this x1 dot here and i am moving the remaining terms to the right hand side when i move this and this term to the right hand side then there is a sign change and finally you need only x1 dot right so i am moving this la to the right hand side that's it 
Now consider our second equation. So in this equation, again replace the values. That is, we know, right, d theta by dt is nothing but it is x2, right? d theta by dt is x2. So d square theta by dt square will be equal to x2 dot, right? So here, j into so d square theta by dt square is x2 dot plus b into again d theta by dt is x2 and again ia is equal to x1 right again we are doing the same thing just frame an expression in terms of x2 of dot right and here the value of x3 is equal to theta right so when you differentiate dx3 by dt is equal to d theta by dt so dx3 by dt is nothing but x3 dot and d theta by dt is x2 we have already framed right now we are writing the state equations that is x1 dot x2 dot and x3 dot right now we are going to rewrite in the matrix form again the same thing so three state variables right and here we are framing a matrix so as usual the same thing the coefficient of x1 is minus ra by l1 and x2 is minus kb by la right and there is no x3 so it is 0 similarly for x2 dot write the x1 coefficient write the x2 coefficient and no x3 so it is 0 and finally here x3 dot it has only x2 so the coefficient of x2 is 1 here therefore the remaining two terms makes 0 right and here x1 x2 x3 as usual and again when you look at the first expression we are having a u term here right so the coefficient of u is 1 by la so write it accordingly 1 by la and here 0 and 0 and here u matrix right so finally we had written the matrix now we are proceeding to the output equation so here again ia omega and theta are the respective outputs so i am equating this out so here the outputs are equated to y1 y2 and y3 so as usual y1 is ia y2 is omega and y3 is theta again i am relating this output to the state variables x1 x2 and x3 right so here when we write it in matrix form you see here this is our final output matrix right so here we are having three outputs right so here occurs a 3 by 3 matrix so again coefficient of x1 is 1 no x2 x3 so 1 0 0 and again when you switch back to this part the coefficient of x2 is 1 right so here 1 so 0 0 and again the coefficient of x3 is 1 so 1 here so 0 0 1 right so finally this is your output equation in the matrix form the next thing is we are going to represent this equation that is x1 dot x2 dot and x3 dot okay in the form of block diagram right again you can just omit this right so we are going to represent these three equations in the form of a block diagram right so here you see again um, I'll give the link of a shorts. No, no shorts. I had made a video. So I'll give the link. Okay, you just get the basic core concept how to draw the block diagram from the given expression. Okay, then it will be more easier for you when you come over here. Right. So here you see first consider x1 dot. Right. So this x1 dot has how many terms? 1, 2, 3. Right. Totally 3 terms. So that we should have a summer right so yes there is a summer because we are having three terms together so the first thing is just draw a summer okay this is the summer here so the output of the summer is it is nothing but x1 dot right so here it is x1 dot right so to this summer what role will the three inputs because here we are having three terms so there should be three inputs so one term is u by la right so here 1 by la is a constant and u is the input so we are representing like this right 1 by la in a block and u is the input so the respective output will be u by la right we had got this term okay 
Then the next thing is you need minus that is odd a by l a which is multiplied by x1 right so make a block for odd a by l a right and here the input should be x1 you just write like this okay then we will find out how x1 arise here here x1 and the type is you see we are having a negative sign here so to the summer it is connected with a negative sign right now this term is over now again move to this part here the constants are kb by la right so again you draw a block kb by la and what is the respective input here it is x2 and again this is also with a minus sign so here here comes x2 right and it is connected to the sum with a minus sign right am i making things clear we have three terms so finally these three terms are connected together by a sum and the output is respect to x1 dot right so when you integrate x1 dot what happens the output is x1 right so this x1 is given to or a by l a because this or a by l a should get multiplied by x1 right so this x1 is given from this point right yes then the next thing is again you see x2 dot right you go to the second expression and here we are having two terms right again you need to introduce two blocks right so here one is kt by j and another one is b by j right so to the second sum one input is kt by j and another input is b by you see b by j here right so kt by j should get multiplied by x1 right so just now we had formed x1 so this x1 is given as input to this kt by j as well as to this or a by l a right so here one input is over and here this is with the plus sign so to this part a plus sign is introduced right the next one is b by j that is with the negative sign so here this b by j block is connected with the negative sign and the input is x2 so here we need x2 you just write x2 and leave it okay don't think much more that's it so finally when we add these two the output is x2 dot so the output from this summary is x2 dot do you agree yes again you are going to integrate this x2 dot so when you integrate what happens x2 dot becomes x2 right so this x2 is given as input to this b by j block right then the next thing is here x2 is equal to what x3 dot right so x2 is equal to x3 dot again we are integrating when you integrate the respect to output is x3 right right now again go back here to this kb by le i want x2 right where is x2 now here we are having x2 so just draw a line connecting this x2 and kb by le right so here finally we had formed our block diagram right so first start with the sum connect the respect to inputs right then when you gradually proceed then you will be ending up with the final block diagram right now again you see we have to represent our outputs also that is y1 y2 as well as y3 so we already know it right x1 is equal to y1 we had framed like that that is y1 is equal to x1 right so here x1 which is equal to y1 and here x3 is equal to y3 and finally here to this line i am having x2 yes or not this this output is x2 this x2 is given as input to this block as well as to this block and as well as if you take a simple line and here comes there is an x2 right here so x2 this x2 is equal to y2 right so finally we have drawn our block diagram right here comes the end of this derivation if you have any doubt let me know in the comment section thank you